Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. We're back for another year here on tour with the Candlelight Christmas Show by G4, which is one of my favourite events of the year. Boys, how are you? Very good, Very thank, good. thank you. Yes. This is amazing, isn't it? I mean, to do it once is great, to do it twice is remarkable. Then to book in a tour a year in advance really is extraordinary. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I mean, it's supply and demand, I think. We, uh, we just sort of put out the venues and see who wants to turn up and then... People do, for some reason. You see, Jonathan said to me when you came into the group that it'll all be over within months because you destroy it, but yeah, that's well, not tried. happened. I tried my best. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I just I wasn't good enough at, uh, at ruining things. So uh. It's amazing. I was with you in the summer and I saw you at Chesterfield, which, let's face it, wasn't the best venue acoustically, but you still pulled it off. And then here we are in a cathedral, which has got to be perfect. I guess for you, having the balance of the two is amazing and you're performing live and that's all you want. Yeah, and Derby Cathedral in particular tonight, it's got the beauty of a cathedral all the traditional architecture but it's not too um, too big to be honest doesn't go back too far the acoustic just sits perfectly it's great great space looking forward to it what's happened in the last six months since we were last year let's come to you first Mike well we've been on tour in theatres back in September wasn't it I think yeah. we did a few dates we even went to Jersey for the first time we did mm-hmm. two shows there and um, that's been pretty busy and then between then and coming on this Christmas tour we've been recording our new album G4 Love Songs which is out in February so we're, we're really pleased that it's coming together nicely we've nearly finished very nearly finished and uh, it's You're great it's really why, exciting why did you choose February for a love songs album I don't know why, why did we Isn't boys it it's Easter it's because it's out in time for my birthday which is on March the 2nd so that's really well, really important it's actually in February so thanks Ben is it yeah 17th. what date is yours 17th three days after Valentine's Day there just coincidentally okay. that works quite well doesn't yeah, it with love cool. songs yeah <laughs> we didn't think about that <laughs> should have thought about it we released this album for you Nick that's what it was <laughs> uh, yeah uh, so when, one. when you say it's a love songs album how sloppy is it how intimate do you get how intimate do we get as a four or with other people <laughs> but you can answer that question in any way in which we've you... been twinning up actually on some of this tour so uh, yeah mum's the word to be honest mm, wow. what, what goes on tour stays on tour <laughs> there's a couple of empty rooms in the hotels around the place <laughs> yeah they offered us a room each but we just said no no we insist we must share they don't do rooms for four people so two was the it's most been a ro- it's do. been a rota basis <laughs> is that, is that yeah. Yeah. It brings a whole new meaning to top and tailing doesn't it I suppose yeah. well you tell me what, what's the original meaning I have no idea Fine. As normal, we have no idea what we're talking about. So this new album then, I mean, it's really exciting because the last one was a major success. The Christmas album that you had this time last year did incredibly well. I guess there's a lot of money to be invested in it. Let's be serious for a minute. It costs a fortune to make an album well. Was there any doubt that you were ever going to make another album or when you saw the success of the last one, did you think, right, this is going to happen? We're creating this through crowdfunding once again and the support has just blown us away. Pledge Music's been the platform. People have embraced it. They've gone for the traditional pre-orders and signed items, but we've also done some amazing exclusives uh, tea at the Ritz and on the Thames and I just went fishing with one girl uh, on a fishing boat the other day and all that money's gone in the pot we went to Prague we've recorded a full orchestra and we've just yeah had an amazing time and it's because of them so yeah every every little uh, support that people have put in has enabled this to happen and this fishing trip with the young lady I mean did you catch crabs lobsters trout haddock cod no, all no. sorts all sorts I mean there was plenty of crabs it's but just, uh, eventually the, we caught a fish the boat was just full of fish I think by the end wasn't it yeah. yeah I guess this is the new way of doing business isn't it where you have to offer something back to the fans to get them to give to you to, for you to give back it's just the new way of making music yeah it's, it's making them feel part of the process I mean we're very much in touch with our fans and we like to do meet and greets before the show and often we do a signing after the show and it's just important for us to be able to meet these people and for them to feel like they're part of it and we, we post up videos and updates of what we're doing so they know literally every step because it's obviously quite a complicated process to record an album and set it all up and just work out what songs you're going to sing and we've we've got some amazing duets we've got Leslie Garrett on board and we've got Meryl Osmond and we're doing some interesting and she managed to kind of crash her car on the way out of the studio which is quite interesting as she fell off this ledge outside and uh, we managed to jack it up because we were late for the London show of this cathedral tour and uh, and to be honest I was tempted to see if we could push the whole car off while she waited for the RAC (laughs) so we could at least get out and get to the gig because we were blocked in (laughs) we were literally blocked behind it but uh, thankfully the jack did work got her up and then she reversed straight into the wall behind so she eventually <laughs> she eventually did get out of this narrow little opening but she had a great great time and her energy oh absolutely incredible yeah, and that absolutely comes across in the recording absolutely and is she okay we should ask that question uh we assume so we just drove straight off so <laughs> <laughs> have you seen that scene in the in-between us where jay gets a motorbike for the first time and crashes it straight into the wall in five seconds 
Because <laughs> we, like we haven't heard from her since, have we? <laughs> <laughs> I think so you know. We should probably yeah, give her a ring. Leslie was fine, but the car's a little bit worse for wear. Yeah. You've come down from Edinburgh today. Yeah. There's lots of risks involved in putting on a show like this, isn't there? Absolutely. It's, it's kind of mad, the distances we travel. And, you you know, because we've got stuff we need to carry, we can't go on trains everywhere. And you're in the lap of the gods, really, as to whether the the motorways are going to play up or whether you can just get straight through. But in we've fact, been all right. You had, a, you had a puncture this morning, didn't you? Yeah, we got back up. to the car uh, after the train down from Edinburgh back to Leeds and, uh, yeah, puncture in the van, so I had to get that sorted. So, so somebody, yeah. somebody's been trying to jeopardise the show, certainly. <laughs> I don't know who it is. Maybe Il Devo. Someone. Been trying. Someone. <laughs> Do you know what I think's amazing about you guys, though, is the fact that you can walk on that stage and no matter what's happened, you have to make it look like you've had the calmest, most wonderful day ever and you have to sound brilliant. I mean, I guess that is the skill that a pro has. Absolutely. I think that's the thing and you you know we're busy setting up the show and making it all all right and we rehearse with our choirs beforehand and on this tour we've got these amazing kid soloists that are singing our Christmas stars at each of the venues so they need to rehearse and when you get on stage it's all you know very glamorous and it looks very effortless well hopefully that's the plan but that's what we love doing and it's there's like always swan, isn't it graceful yeah. swan and then underneath the water you've got the flapping legs but actually like conversely last night um, uh, it's kind of flipped the other way around where you have to try and perform something like bring him home after you heard these amazing um, uh, stories of uh, for the missing people um, uh, and accounts accounts of these missing people um, and it's 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 that's some that's something where you have to almost try to detach yourself in a way from what you've heard so you can actually perform because it's so otherwise touching these stories exactly. you just wouldn't make it from A to B otherwise you just yeah. have to sit there and kind of go we've got a job to do because some of the stories are just way beyond what we comprehend you know as mm. people we sit there and go you know we've had this stress getting to the venue or in fact there's some people say well I haven't seen anybody this person in 30 40 50 years you know and it just puts everything in perspective we're worried about you know a sound check and whether you know the pianist is going to play this or what have you and all these problems become really insignificant really did your pianist ever let you down very very often very often, very often. No, that wasn't yes. rhyming slang, by the way, Ben. <laughs> um, and then we look at the world around What's us, which is never... slang for? I don't know. Oh, it doesn't really rhyme. Sure. I suppose it's the same word, really, when you think theorist. about it. I suppose. Yeah. Theorist or... <laughs> <laughs> yes, you don't want to sit on the theorist knee, do you? No. Are you talking about flowers? Peonies? I do. Yes, right, that, yeah. that's what it is. And, and in this confusing world, it's so great to see you boys live. And we look at what you do. I mean, in the summer, again, I don't think you've ever sounded better. I know I say this every time, but it's so rare you hear people who get better and care as much. Most people get tarnished and they get fed up and they get bored and want to do something else. You guys seem to be more in love with what you do than ever. When did you last have your ears cleaned out? <laughs> well, we're all getting old. It could be that. Have you had them checked? <laughs> <laughs> Mike's just asking because he's asking for a tip as to where to go. That's, that's all that is. Yeah, I'm desperate. <laughs> it's, it's where did you last get your ears cleaned? Is what meant to ask. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, but we do care. We, we uh, like... Uh, a pride in our own performance is something that has always been important for us as musicians and um, it's a really important part of, of our drive and our, our focus is actually making sure that at the end of it all we are happy with what we've just done um, whether the audience are or not <laughs> you know, we have to thankfully they are traditionally happy with it too yeah. no we have an amazing rapport with the audience with ourselves uh, it's just a fun experience we love what we're doing it was great to have the gap the, to disband for seven years I think it was the best thing G4 could have ever done we've come back fresh more experienced with a whole load more wealth of kind of professional and technical ability but also as humans and as as adults I think it's, it's fabulous and that energy and that passion comes across. And isn't it great you have to go away to realise what you've got and then you wonder will anybody be there to support you and will they care and they did that must have been the greatest relief to know there'd still be an audience which is discernibly getting bigger I've never seen a queue outside the Derby Cathedral like there is right now Isn't that amazing and you know when we first decided and Mike got us back together to do one show at the Barbican we didn't know if we were going to sell it out in five minutes or sell two tickets we had no idea and luckily you know there was an amazing response there and it's just carried on because people you know there was such an invention of all these reality tv shows and it's so easy for people to just kind of drift away but we do have an incredibly loyal support and some of them we recognize by face and by name and other people not so much and you know they're just there and it's fantastic to have that variety and depth of support that people come and get on board with us the most touching thing on uh, on each of the shows that we're doing is the new audiences coming uh, be them people that have never heard us before or people that have 
have the old albums, never seen us live, and all of a sudden they're there at the show and they're totally engaged. There was a story sent to us on Facebook the other day, Total Scrooge, a son of a lovely lady who came, brought the son along, uh, potentially as punishment for something, I'm not sure. <laughs> but he, he left absolutely elated, so feeling so festive, so uplifted and so connected with what we'd done and the show that we created. And, and that was just such an amazing journey to go on. They're then really excited to come to another show of ours and those stories mean the world to us. Well, that gives us such energy as well because, you know, we're obviously like really thrilled to be coming and doing these shows. But, you know, you go every day and you say sometimes you're travelling for hours and you get to a place and you might be a bit tired. When you see their enthusiasm mm -hmm. for it as well, it lifts you if one of us is a bit tired, get on any given day. It lifts you and lifts your performance as well, which is really, really important. And thank God you shot to fame when you did. It seems very cynical now that you are deliberately forgotten very quickly and you have to be so that the next year can come. That wasn't mm -hmm. the case, was it, when you started? Because they were still embracing you. They still looked after you. Now it's about, OK, win it. OK, we're going to forget because next year there's a new yeah. one. And they say that we were sort of forgotten forever. If you look at the oh, X yeah. Factor, <laughs> G4 has never been mentioned. I think the other week we went on the Extra Factor as a, a little bit of fun and Louis Walsh chatted to us on Skype and uh, well, three of us, Ben, couldn't make it so we had a mask. But we um, <laughs> we had a really uh, kind of distant relationship with the show and they I think there wasn't a good connection from them for the first series so it actually gave us the space to evolve as artists, to connect with an audience and, and in particular to embrace the UK audience, the people that voted us there. We sustained a perform for those people. A lot of people are so desperate to get international so quick. Mm. They try and break America and they turn their back on those amazing people that actually picked the phone up and created and ignited their career. And it's been very special for us to kind of perform for them and still do that today. And of course, there was uh, like the, the, the you, when you were on The X Factor, however many years ago, it was before all the Twitter and Facebook and all that kind of stuff. So the, the, they never had that following back then. Mm. Um, and so maybe that's kind of connected to this sort of transient group thing, which mm -hmm. is, as you say, one year and then you're gone. Um, and so for some reason that made more of a lasting impression because they didn't have that social media presence. So that's and let's face it, rule one of show business, never ask the public what they think on Twitter because they'll tell you. <laughs> they will. They will. Oh, yeah. And some. Yeah. And some. <laughs> Good rule. And Cal's not always right. I always remember Terry Fater saying, he said, oh, a ventriloquist will never, ever do big business. <laughs> a year later, he signed a 10-year contract for 100 million. He's just signed a second contract it's in big, Vegas. Big business, isn't it? Is that there? Yeah, yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah, yeah, there you are. Hey, boys, congratulations. So we've got the spring tour coming up. We've got the album in February and you've already booked in the Christmas tour 2017. Yeah. And thank God you're coming to Nottingham Cathedral because petrol don't grow on trees, you know. Coming here to Derby is an inconvenience. No, it doesn't grow on trees. How it's underground, isn't it? Yeah, so you get, dead yeah. Is that right? Dead yeah. trees. I Maybe thought it came out of a pump. Go, just go to a petrol station. <laughs> find it there. It saves time, doesn't it? Digging it yourself. <laughs> Boys, congratulations. Well done. Ben, nice to see you again. Lovely, thank you so lovely. much, Mike. Thank Thanks you very so much for having us back. Always nice Star. to see Good you, fun. Colin. Uh, yeah, Jonathan. Yeah. Mike. Yeah. Very nice to see you, boys. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Take Thank you. Care. Thanks.